I want to kick off with uh, the latest information that we have out of Bogalusa in Louisiana. We do have an uh, confirmed and observed tornado on the ground. Breaking news, mm -hmm. yeah, here in southwestern Louisiana, right towards the Port Arthur area. This is uh, now just into the Weather Nation studio. That's so, right. uh, yeah, we are officially talking about a landfalling system now. You can see anywhere from D.C. down the spine of the Appalachians all the way up towards northern Maine, we have winter storm warnings in effect. So it's not just going to be a coastal storm. It's going to be all the way inland as well. North Carolina State Capitol under a flash flood emergency earlier today. This is because we've had an immense amount of moisture fall in the last several hours, and these are uh, very large wildfires. These are the reason why this fire has spread so much and so fast just in a short amount of time. We do have a pretty decent storm system coming through, and it is going to completely obliterate our temperatures here. And for the next one hour, we do have a radar confirmed tornado on the ground here just to the east of Jackson, Mississippi. And that's a storm that's going to be on everybody's minds for for years to come, mm -hmm. not only the people who are impacted, but us meteorologists as well who had to cover a storm like that. You mm -hmm. don't, we don't get to cover storms mm -hmm. like that ever because they are just so rare. I mean, a storm like this has never hit the Florida Panhandle. For many, this is going to be a once in a lifetime yeah. type deal. It began Monday evening, so just late last night in Santa Paula. 31,000 acres have already burned. We have Santa Ana winds down there. We've been telling you about those red flag warnings and the critical fire danger that we've had. We've had very gusty winds all around the LA metro area and even down towards areas like Lake Havasu City and Las Vegas. These are the reason why this fire has spread so much and so fast just in a short amount of time. The windy conditions coupled with how dry the actual air is going to be over the next several days through the day today and also also through our afternoon on Wednesday is going to keep those fire conditions prominent and also present throughout the end of the day Wednesday into the day on Thursday. So we have critical fire danger again around the LA metro area also from Santa Maria down towards San Diego. It's either elevated critical or extreme and we hold on to that all the way through our Tuesday and all the way through our Thursday we're dealing with red flag warning. Conditions are just not favorable for any kind of burning to happen across uh, the west coast and really the southwest at all over the next couple of days. We have several large, extremely large wildfires out there burning right now. We are going to be in full fledged blizzard mode here in New York City. We're expecting anywhere from about 12 to 20 inches of snow. Uh, we are talking about a decent cool down that's going to be brief for a lot of folks, but it is going to be uh, it's going to be pretty sudden, especially as we head towards Sunday. These uh, temperatures are going to be plummeting down to the south as we watch a cold front move through expecting uh, some pretty big travel delays as the snow continues to fall. Winter weather advisories posted from Davenport all the way over towards Lima, Ohio. Winter storm warnings for Cleveland, Ohio and then back towards about uh, La Crosse, Michigan and Sioux Falls and uh, South Dakota. But notice the temperature change outside for your lunchtime hour. It is huge, guys. It's massive out there. Uh, 40 degree difference in Evansville, 45 degrees colder than this time yesterday in Indianapolis. Normally we talk about a 24 hour temperature change in the range of 5, 10, maybe 15 degrees. When you start to get to 20, 25 degrees, that's when it gets impressive. 45 degrees? God. Whoa, that is a big time change. Winter storm watches are in place, which means winter storm like conditions are going to be possible within the next 36 hours. We have winter weather advisories from the big bend of Florida. Yeah, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, we have winter weather advisories. But as we head overnight into early Wednesday morning, this low pressure system is going to form uh, right over the northern Bahama Islands. That's going to bring rain from Ocala down towards Cape Coral maybe in through uh, Port St. Lucie, but look up through I-10, Valdosta on the Florida Georgia line, Savannah, Georgia. That's when we're going to be waking up to a little bit of a mixture of rain and snow and also some ice that could be falling out of the sky. And then we move further into the day. We wrap in a little bit more cool air. Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington up towards New Bern, North Carolina. We see that switch over to all snow and then it tapers off down for the southeast, but it's only just now starting to get going for the northeast. By Thursday morning, the Delmarva and New York City and even up towards Boston you will be seeing the snow by the afternoon hours. The system deepens even further uh, just to the south of Nova Scotia, bringing extremely windy conditions up to Maine. We are definitely going to see these winter weather alerts be posted for the coastal areas of the northeast in the next about, I'd say, 12 hours through the rest of the day today uh, for the anticipation of that snow to come.
Texas. Flash flooding is also going to be a concern as the remnants of Florence continues to move up the spine of the Appalachians from Boston out towards Syracuse and then all the way down towards Blacksburg, Virginia. We are watching for the possibility of flash flooding. Of course, if you're in green, that means watch out for the possibility of flooding. Uh, if you are highlighted in red, that's a flash flood warning, and that means that flooding is happening right now, which we saw a lot of yesterday across the Carolinas. Reports over the weekend extremely widespread from Tulsa all the way up to just south of Columbus, uh, Ohio. So you can see just the expansiveness of the flooding and those flood warnings continue from Chicago all the way down the Mississippi towards uh, places in Louisiana under flood warnings because of the rising water. Now this area that's highlighted is where we have been seeing a lot of flooding. Unfortunately, as we head towards Wednesday morning, this is the same area that's going to be seeing a lot of heavy rain even as we continue throughout most of the day on Wednesday. Scattered showers uh, exactly in an area where we do not need it. We had heavy rain this morning in the northeast. A lot of that is starting to push offshore, so we'll catch a quick break of the rain, the steady rain, but we'll have more of that to come later on. Hence why we're actually worried about uh, Washington, D.C., New York, Bangor, Maine. The possibility of flooding is actually going to be there for the rest of the day today. So the little break that you have right now actually could come back with quite a vengeance with some severe weather. Also notice that we're going to see a general weakening trend throughout the rest of the day today. We are sucking in a lot of dry air uh, into the center of this system. Still have a little bit of convection right onto the northwest side of it, but mainly all of the action remains off to the eastern half of this tropical storm. Water temperatures are very conducive for development as well. Talking about the lower to mid 80s uh, for the water temperatures, the ocean or the storms really use that ocean heat to act as fuel uh, for the system. We are also watching the possibility of tropical storm like conditions for much of the area from Houston out towards Mobile, Alabama, and all the way up towards Alexandria, Louisiana as well. Don't focus on the initial and the exact track of the system because it's going to be all areas that are actually just off to the east and south of this track that are going to be inundated with a lot of very heavy rain. Also, the waves, because of the wind, have been extremely high 12 to 15 foot waves uh, battling a lot of the shipping interests and a lot of oil rigs out in the Gulf. Once it gets closer to shore, those waves break down to about six feet, three feet maybe in uh, some other areas, but it's still going to be the impact of a higher than normal high tide and also those waves adding in to some coastal flooding issues that we could be seeing and that are pushing on uh, into coastal portions of the western panhandle of Florida, Mississippi, Alabama and Louisiana that will continue to bring some very heavy tropical downpours. We're talking about reduced visibilities and also some thunder and lightning with some of the strongest squalls. Wind gusts up to 40 to 50 miles per hour and a big flooding concern here. Not not as organized right now. It's starting to weaken just a bit, but essentially what the models are thinking that this cluster of storms is going to do is move due west into uh, the Caribbean, and we have a lot of warm water here as well. This could impact uh, places like the Dominican and up towards uh, the Bahamas as well, so a very far reaching effect that this storm could have. We look at a lot of models to uh, see what they're thinking and what uh, the understanding of the system is going to be, and one model that we look at is uh, the BAMS model, the GFS, and also the Euro, and one model is bringing Bringing it essentially once it develops over Cancun uh, due north into the Big Bend of Florida into the pan, uh, Florida Panhandle. But there's a couple other models that are having it develop and that are bringing it due north or they're bringing it out to the west a little bit. So again, there's still a lot of uncertainty with this system. And so we have a good amount of time to prepare. But right now, just be on alert. Go ahead and have your hurricane kit ready. Go ahead and have your preparedness plan ready. It's not going to be hurtful at all if you go ahead and get it done now uh, rather than waiting till the last minute when we actually have something brewing. And realize what just happened here across the Florida Panhandle. And uh, remember that there's trees down, there's power lines down, there's fences down, there's roads that are missing, there's houses that are missing. They're just completely gone here. You're not going to be able to recognize some areas, especially if you lived in Mexico Beach basically ground zero for this hurricane. You just want to prepare for that in general. Re realize that it's not going to be easy to get back into this area and also realize that there is going to be a lot that's going to have to happen over the next couple of days. So be aware and just have a way to get that information to you, whether it's local news, local radio, uh, or even us as well, bringing you the latest as much as we can. We will do as much as we can, but you're going to be enduring something that not a lot of folks endure when they go back to a home that has just been devastated by a just about category five hurricane uh, direct landfall. We 
just upgraded to a moderate risk right around the Wichita Falls area, so south of Oklahoma City, just to the north of Abilene. And that means we're fine-tuning the forecast even more hour by hour, and we're thinking that that is going to be the most likely area to see some of the most severe weather. We're also going to be funneling in a lot of warm air, not just from the Pacific, but also from the Gulf of Mexico as well. So we're really seeing every ingredient that we need here coming together just perfectly. We have a lot of moisture that's being funneled in all the way from the Pacific, and that's going to be funneled in straight to the central region where we have a lot of that severe weather threat. The dry line, which is uh, something that us Texans and Oklahomans know a lot about because we see that every severe weather season. Remember that because that's what we have going on throughout the day today. Forecast bringing that front through the area by this evening, so severe weather likely from Oklahoma City down towards San Antonio. By the time we head towards tomorrow morning, this front continues to trek off to the east, which means our severe weather Weather threat also moves off to the east. This is what it's going to be looking like. We have a lot of warm air surging in from the south, so surface winds are coming from the south of east. So let's say they're coming this way. All right, now you have to go higher up in the atmosphere, and our winds are coming from a completely different direction. So you have your surface winds uh, going one way, your upper level winds going another way. What we call that is shear, and we need shear to have uh, the rotation in the atmosphere. That's what gives us some of that severe weather, and every ingredient that we need to have that severe weather is in place throughout the day today. Basically right in this area. Uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, central Louisiana into western portion, eastern portions of uh, Oklahoma. The threat of severe weather is going to be possible by the time we head to this afternoon with the instability of the heating of the day. And with that is going to come the chance for some damaging winds. Tomorrow's threat looking even more impressive. So Mike, let's talk them through how many people are going to be affected and exactly where these uh, concerns are going to be at. Not a bad drawing on the fly because this is that risk he was talking about a little bit closer oh, to St. Really Louis. Good. Not bad though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see how that compares. That's actually, that's impressive, Andy. Thank you. I'm going to take that shot more time so we can see his drawing versus see? what actually, see? Yeah. not bad. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Thanks so much for staying with us. It's a scary morning unfolding across Jackson, Mississippi. You can see that we are tracking a slew of severe thunderstorms and tornado warnings right now. This tornado warning right around Clayville was just uh, confirmed on the ground here. It's an observed tornado now for Chesterfield and Powhatan, Virginia. Uh, we do have several tornado warnings that are still in place right now. We actually just dropped the one that was around Jackson, Mississippi. So we are now down uh, to two tornado warnings. A scary thing here in uh, Chesterfield County, they are actually under three different tornado warnings. So so those two areas that I'm circling, uh, this is where we have some of the best radar signatures here of maybe an isolated tornado. It's where you get those contrasting winds, uh, where you have a lot of winds coming inbound and outbound from the radar site, which is a little bit further off to the south. But nonetheless, we do have some broad rotation happening within these cells here.